Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program... Set before us today is Jesus who is both child and Lord. He must honor his father and his mother, and he does by being about the business of his heavenly Father. He must be in his Father's house, doing what his Father desires. And what is the Father's will? That his Son would be sacrificed, so that his blood might redeem Joseph and Mary and the whole world from sin. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured into our hearts the true light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light may shine forth in our lives. 
through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Kings chapter 3. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on, this, on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance 
until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover, and when he was twelve years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances, and when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text this day is the Gospel reading taken from St. Luke, chapter 2. Parenting is 
one of the most important and one of the most difficult vocations in all the world. Parents want what is best for their children, but that's often a double-edged sword. On the one hand, parents don't always know what is best. And on the other hand, they may know, but they're unable to do anything about it. When you add to that the constant struggle of children who don't always agree with their parents, well, you have a difficult task indeed. For parents, the last, things that, the last thing that you want is for your child to get hurt. You want them to learn from the mistakes that you have made. But children, they grow and they mature, and as they do, they become more and more independent. As the parenting guru John Roseman would say, the role of parents is to de-parent their children. Or as I like to say, get to the point where they can live without you. But that's hard for parents to do. Today, we hear of the child Jesus. And he's not your ordinary child. For the favor of God was upon him. And in typical Jesus fashion, he turns everything upside down. He's not the parent, he's the child. And yet, here in our text, in essence, he is dechilding his parents. Notice where St. Luke starts with our text. He starts with the Passover feast. Joseph and Mary are faithful, godly parents. They're Ephesians 6 verse 4 kind of parents, which says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. And that's what Joseph has been doing. Every year, he and Mary would go up to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of the Passover. And as every Israelite father was bound to do, Joseph taught his family what the Passover was all about. And now we hear that at age 12, Jesus goes up with his father and his mother to the feast. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. To understand how Jesus de-childs his parents, one must first understand the feast of the Passover. And that is begins in Egypt. The Israelites have been slaves in Egypt for some 400 years when God sends Moses to them in order to deliver them. And he goes to Pharaoh and he asks that God's people would be let go. And Pharaoh refuses. Even after nine horrendous plagues have been poured out on the Egyptians, Pharaoh still refuses. Well, there's a tenth plague. The last plague that God sends upon the land of Egypt was a plague in which the angel of death passed over the land and killed the firstborn male of men and beast. With that plague, death filled the land. But God had promised to spare those homes that were marked by the blood of a lamb. He promised that death would pass over them. And so every year since that first Passover, the Israelites would celebrate the feast by shedding the blood of a lamb and then eating that lamb. 
at the Passover feast, the children would ask the father, why do we do these things? And the father would teach his family, basically answering the question, what does this mean? The Passover feast looked back towards that great deliverance that God had provided to their fathers of old. When he delivered them from their Egyptian enemies, from the bondage of slavery, and delivered them from the angel of death. But this feast also looked forward. It looked forward to that greater deliverance that the Lord had promised. That the Messiah, who was to come, would deliver them from their greater enemies, their greater bondage, and from the greater death. Jesus is that promised Messiah. He is the Lamb of God, the Passover Lamb, whose life is sacrificed, whose blood is shed in order to cover you and deliver you from sin, death, and everlasting damnation. But here in our text, the time had not yet fully come for the sacrificing of that Passover lamb, the Passover lamb. There are still 20 more Passover feasts for Jesus to attend. And yet, already here, he is preparing his parents for that day when their son will not return home with them from the feast. That day when he will give his life for the life of the world. Can you imagine what that must have been like for Joseph and Mary? They knew what the Passover was all about. Even before the birth of Jesus, Mary has been pondering and treasuring all of these things up in her heart. And every time that, that Joseph would call Jesus by name, he would be reminded that this is the one who would save his people from their sin. Each year, they celebrated the Passover like no others. Ironically, at this Passover feast, Jesus is found in the temple teaching the teachers. Already, He's connecting the dots for them, teaching them how the kingdom of God has come in him and is fulfilled in him, leading them from the Passover feast to his Passover sacrifice, instructing the teachers and bringing them up in the way of the Lord. Set before us today is Jesus, who is both child and Lord. He must honor his father and his mother, and he does, by being about the business of his heavenly father. He must be in his father's house, doing what his father desires. And what is the father's will? That his son would be sacrificed so that his blood might redeem Joseph and Mary and the whole world from sin. There's a lesson here for all of us. For as St. Paul says, we are the adopted sons of God who are redeemed through the blood of the Lamb, Jesus. So that you may increase in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God, the Lord himself gathers you into his house, redeeming you from all sin, setting you free from that which binds you, and giving you the very life of the God-man, Jesus. Dearly beloved, 
Don't let anything keep you from this greatest treasure on earth. Sit at the feet of Jesus, who instructs and leads you in the way that leads to life everlasting. Come and feast with him. Have your pastor bring this feast to you so that you might receive the very body and blood of Jesus Christ that was given and shed for you so that his blood might mark you and death pass over you. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding guards your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.